So remember I mentioned that beta HCG does a really good job of imitating TSH because it binds to the thyroid follicular cells and stimulates release of your thyroid hormones. But we have certain states in pregnancy where you have a really, really, really huge increase in beta HCG. And one of them is hyperemesis gravidarum. And the other is a molar pregnancy. So now you have massive amounts of beta HCG. So what's going to happen is, and this is a patient who has otherwise normal thyroid function. You have a massive amount of beta HCG. And so you're going to have perhaps slightly more free T4 than you would in a normal pregnancy. And maybe even more free T3 since remember 9% of the hormone secreted by the thyroid is free T3. So what happens is since you have this tangible increase in free T4, you're going to have a considerable decrease in TSH. It's going to be lower than you would have in a normal pregnancy. And when you have such a case where you have the level of your TSH being lower than the normal for pregnancy state, but not too low. It's called, called transient gestational thyrotoxicosis. Okay. And another thing I want to remind you of is we do not use, we do not generally look at free T4 as a value in pregnancy. This is just to show you um, kind of the mechanism of how the beta HCG works in an excessive state. In pregnancy, in testing people for pregnant in for thyroid function in pregnancy, they found that when they assay free T4, it's not very accurate. However, just know that since your total T4, which is actually the standard for measuring thyroid hormone in pregnant women, your total uh, is going to be kind of normal, maybe, maybe increased. And that's because your total is a reflection, and when I put normal and normal for pregnancy, normal weight for pregnancy, not normal for a non-pregnant person. Your total T4 is, remember, a reflection of the, the TBG bound T4 and the free T4. So if this is increased, it's likely that it would lead an increase to total T4. On the other hand, when we talk about primary stimulation of the thyroid, so you got your IVIGs attacking your thyroid, and it's causing a large increase in free T4 and a tangible increase in free T3. This is so huge. This is so huge. This is a stronger effect then the beta HCG has as the TSH imitator. This is a stronger effect, the IVIG on the TSH receptor, that you've got a massive increase in free T4. The massive free T4 is going to have the effect of having a massive decrease in TSH. So that's a hallmark of something called um, of somebody who has graves and who happens to be pregnant, that this TSH is very, very low. And in fact, 
uh, this is probably the main diagnosis for somebody who is pregnant and who has a massive decrease in their TSH. Now, since you have, and since I just mentioned that, oh, wrong color. Since I just mentioned that we do not really look at free T4 in a pregnant patient, think about what would happen to total T4 in a Graves patient. So you have this massive increase in free T4. So even if, so you have these TBGs in your circulation. If there's so much T4 that they're all saturated, you're not only going to have an increase in your bound portion, you're going to have an increase in your free portion because there's going to be uh, some circulating because the sites on the TBGs, the, thyro the thyroxin binding globulins, are going to be saturated. They're going to be busy. So it's probable that you're going to also have an increase in your total T4. So I just want to thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe for instant updates for my future videos. Thank you.